Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man Stevens, Hello. and the man who has always wanted to meet Cinderella. Not the character, the 80s band that nobody remembers. Dude, so, nobody's fool is the jam. Don't fuck around. <laughs> so, we, we told you uh, last week that uh, Ryan and James would kind of give their, their opinion about what my, my friends... A message to us about our anti-rape episode. I guess would be the best way to describe it. So, it's we, our we, we PSA were, episode. We were really taking a hard stance. Um, I don't know why it's considered yeah, a hard well, stance, but it, apparently it that's, has been. That's, I was I was saying that sarcastically uh, when I when I said we were we were taking the hard stance on rape, and I and I hope uh, last episode I didn't come off as too sort of flippant about the um, you know the thing. I was just I I'm. I'm sad that it, that people would would think that we wouldn't take a hard stance on it. You know what I mean? That there's people yeah. out there in society that wouldn't flat out just like unqualified, uh, un, uh, non qualifyingly say fucking rape is is the worst thing. You know. It's so, um, but my uh, after reading her response, I'm just going to quote a couple things real real quick, and because I think. This goes back to something that Ryan was talking about last week. And what my issue is when she says this is rape is not being used and thrown around. Women are starting to be more confident to step forward. I don't have anything wrong with that. But um, what I wanted to point out is she says at the end, this wasn't as cringe cringy as I expected three straight white dudes discussing sexual assault would be. Now, if I take that and place that up to the thing of it's not being used and thrown around, quote unquote, if it wasn't being used as frequently and as abusive as it is sometimes, then I don't think it would have been cringy for someone to think that three straight white males on a discussion of rape what do you mean by thrown away? I mean, as far as well, the, the saying woman saying, oh, this guy raped me in the to wrong way? a sense of there have been cases where women have used, oh, he raped me when it fits their means. I, I think, And her, I think that as it's being used, it becomes uh, desensi- desensitizes somebody to the point that where it comes to three white dudes, you know, straight white dudes talking about rape, it kind of makes some females feel that way. Of cringeworthy because why why would we not be against rape for one? For yeah. two, if it's not being used to the point that it is being abused, then she wouldn't even have that response, thinking I, that three white guys would be upset about it being used again, is what my point is. I think her I think her her point, and I'm this is just me speaking on her behalf, was the fact that the amount of cases of women being raped versus the amount of cases of women uh, abusing, uh, abusing the, word. The, the rape are yeah, there's yeah, an yeah. imbalance. Yeah. More women I, are raped than I got, the I got that impression as well. And that, that's actually one of the things I wanted to say. Is, is, I mean, this is this is nothing true. And I'm, I swear to you, I'm not one of the like, like everything is fake news people. Um, I, I'm one of the it's people that, strong. you know, may or may not know how to actually vet sources. Um, I, I look beyond headlines, and I'll actually read an article or two if I'm interested enough in something. Um, but I'm also a fan of statistics, you know, and, and, and sort of independently finding, you know, different sets of research data that, that point to one thing versus another. But um, the, the media, that all being said, the media has always disproportionately reported certain things, you know, so they'll make it sound like a vocal minority is the majority in a particular issue. Um, blanket statement, by the way. Um, when it when it comes to this one, certain I, I don't even want to put it on size because it's it's sort of sort of bipartisan in this regard. Certain media organizations, or if you look in just down the right streets, you're going to see the what feels like a disproportionate amount of women. Hey, Ryan, you, you cut out there if you want to repeat what you just said. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. M- my so, internet uh, hates was, you, apparently. That's all right. I was just saying that that there's, if you look down certain avenues of, of media, 
again, not by bipar- uh, bipartisan in general, you will find whatever you kind of tend to seek a pattern towards. So you'll see disproportionately amount of things being reported as far as these two kids consensually had sex. We have recordings of, of text messages where they said, hey, make sure to bring condoms. And um, the chick ends up claiming that, that he raped her. That might seem like it happens a lot based on the amount of reporting you might have may or may not have seen on it. And same is is true for the inverse. So just because X thing is reported X amount of times doesn't mean that's indicative of how often it happens. So it's important for people to realize if they're talking about murder in a particular place or rape in a particular place or crime in general, you know, it's it's important to kind of look into you know, you would think the world's going to hell in a handbasket if all you did was watch the fucking news because all you ever see is murder. But if it bleeds, it leads, right? Yeah. So obviously people are dying. I don't know if it's obvious, but people are dying by by violent crimes in record low numbers throughout the entirety of history. You're, there's no safer time you can possibly be in than literally this very second. I, I, would, I, I would probably add in Western cultures because... There's definitely parts of the world that uh, no, no, no. In as a whole, as you, humanity, you you think so? Even considering I'm, some I'm, no, of no, like, no, I don't. This is I demonstrably true. I, I promise you, this is well, true. like well, like say like in in the Middle East, some parts of Africa, um, where where women are still more treated like you know like a cat, like a horse is you know higher up in the food chain than a woman. Even even those countries. Yeah, even even those places that are still doing literally. You know, human rights or human, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, crimes against humanity. You know, the, 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 the worst things possible to do to other people in these different countries is happening in, in, in less numbers than ever. Now, obviously, we can, we can really just start counting uh, recent history because you get back far enough and you have the Roman Empire and Mongols and fuck, you were dying. Your, your friends were dying left and right. But just throughout sort of modern history, it is it has been so less and less every single year, you know, to the to the point where like like the trend is in the right direction, despite what, again, media might the impression that you might get from media. Obviously, nobody in the media is saying, hey, everyone lock your doors, um, you know, because they're coming to get you right now. It's just, oh, I've seen 20 murder stories and one story about cute dogs. True. So apparently there's only mm. one cute dog out there and Morning everyone cats. I know is going to be murdered. So it's it's funny. Uh, a guy I used to work with always liked bringing up a story. He said, at some point in time, there was a news station that that all it did was report happy stories. His comment was, it lasted about as long as some of their commercials. Yeah, that, um, I was just going to say, that must have been about five minutes of that. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that was that was all a really long, fucking winded way of saying that that I I get liars. what you what she is saying as far as you know it might be in disproportionate numbers. <laughs> so I I, I ran across something, and not to make the last couple of episodes like uh, some sort of uh, comment on culture, but I thought this was fascinating. There was uh, I. My Twitter's not working great right now, but it's a, the idea of toxic masculinity. And it says it's one of the ways in which the patriarchy, this is according to the website, is harmful to men. It refers to this uh, socially constructed attitude that describes the masculine general as violent, unemotional, and uh, sexually aggressive, and so forth. Uh, as well known as the masculinity men's right movement that is mostly anti-feminism and has yet to appear for a silency tactic is used to discredit the patriarchy harm to people who are not men so I, basically the, the, this person's twitter comment was really what are ways that uh, tos- toxic masculinity is bad for men M- my first thought was i'm not sure if i don't like the word toxic because a if you said you know toxic femininity they'd get very pissed and so this is me just being you know the shoes on the other foot saying can you agree with the idea of toxic masculinity? But I do kind of uh, agree with some of the people's points, you know, because men, uh, socially, at least in the United States, and I'd probably say most of the world, men are supposed to be stoic, unemotional, you know, type of thing. So I was kind of wondering what you, you guys thought of that, 
because this is a, this is a conversation I've seen more and more with kind of the social justice warriors, some of the more feminists, probably the more more close to fourth wave feminists than the earlier wave feminists. So what do you guys think? I think I see too many men walking around in shorts. Put your pants back on. Um, okay. I, I don't say- give a shit, honestly. Like, why is this toxic masculinity even an issue? I think, as far as that goes, um, men, well, most okay. men shouldn't I- give a shit. I, I, have, uh, I have, I have, I have a few thoughts. Uh, one, the right. the male, the yeah, the um, what do you call? It? What was the word? Um, men's rights activists. Yeah. That's four assholes fucking on the internet. There, I, I, I can't um, imagine that there's any any large number of group of, of men who are thinking themselves, we got to protect our fucking rights. Well, here's... here's That's the <laughs> dumbest thing ever. Well, here's where I... <laughs> I disagree with you to some degree. Um, in California, what I'm about to say is not as common, but uh, traditionally, say if you're getting divorced, divorce, 99% of the time, traditionally, the woman, no matter what, would always get the kids. Now, in the state of California... It seems to be the opposite for some people. I know, uh, especially when the husband seems to be a real piece of work. So I, I think what their, I think their motives are in the wrong direction. Um, far as some of these guys are really anti women, but I don't understand because um, I feel the same way about some of these feminists, where they seem to be hardcore. I think if people are more geared towards uh, was it equality, what they call it, egalitarian, or the fact that there, there's an equal middle. And, and I, that's what I think some of the people I've seen are kind of talking about is, is even though I, I don't think men have as much to worry about to some degree as, as, as women do. I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have a cat who just entered my fucking studio. Yeah, they will stay out of Chase the Moth Cup. To, um, I think if we really think, put some thought into it, I think that what they've done is they're trying to make it equal rights for women and when they did that they kind of pushed the male dominant side back which i don't really necessarily have an issue with i think that any job a man can do a woman can do if she puts her mind to it and effort um but i think this whole movement of uh, i guess kind of squashing the male dominant I don't know well, like the male personality of being able to go out there and and I guess put in hard work and things like that I, I don't know I don't see it as an issue well here uh, that's well, my thing I, I, is, yeah. like, why is this an issue I, I mean as far as I'm concerned it's skinny jeans man well, buns okay. and well, fucking hold on, hipsters hold on. douchebag here, beards well hold on real quick here's some examples on this website um See the persa- uh, to see da, da, da. so persuasive idea is a cat completely out of there if you check over there the persuasive the persuasive uh, the pers- yeah. the idea of that male and female interactions are as com- are competition not cooperation I would say a that's a guy thing I know more guys are competitive than women the idea that men truly cannot understand women and vice versa and following that that no true companion can can be had between different sexes. I would disagree. I do think there's a gender difference. It's um, what, what they call it, the love languages. There's just a difference between the way men and women think. Um, that, okay. The idea by that real... And, by, by and large, I mean, obviously, we're, there's, there's fringes of Wait, there's, there's a couple like, more. Gonna... Address that real there, There's a couple more I want to read, just real quick. as far as I heard on all of that is, wham. <laughs> That's all I heard. Um, let's see. The, uh, the relative idea that men you? cannot be a victim or abu- uh, of abuse... Or that talking about it is shameful. I would say that's more the 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 broski culture to some degree. Um, I don't think that's a, a man issue. I do know people who have kind of thought that way, and and to be honest, they they were on the lighter end of the chromosomes. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. The the idea that me, real men should be prepared to be violent even when it's not called for. I would say partially that's because men are geared to be in some little bit uh, geared towards to be a little bit more vigilant on that side of things that that men for some reason are hardwired to 
not maybe run, but the response is to fight it. Because I know more guys that if somebody came up, they'd say, well, I got no choice. Where most women I know I don't. would want. I ain't would, running would, away. Yeah. Maybe for downhill. <laughs> well, I mean, because I, I know a lot of women that say, you know, when somebody creepy comes up, they'll cross the street, they'll do this. There's a lot of steps involved. When most guys I know will go, you know, the worst comes to worst as I get stabbed type of thing. Well, here, here's the thing, I think, with... with with that is that um, it's something that we do actually have in our back pocket. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if I'm scared to walk down the street, I can hit the gym and get a lot fucking bigger, you know, take a couple of boxing classes, you know what I mean? And, and a lot of we're going to fucking protect You're myself. Well, you need Roy's man. Nothing. Nothing's going to help you there, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that little. I mean, look, I'm out, I'm completely out of shape. I'm skinny. You know what I mean? If, uh, but I'm I'm a buck eighty five walking around. So if I literally just started working out, I'd probably walk around. Well, wait a minute, you're a buck eighty five. What do you carry yeah. in your pockets? Like a lead weighted dildo? You know oh. that's illegal in California, right? Because <laughs> aren't you like is four it? foot nine? Yes, it is illegal to carry a lead weighted dildo. In California. Well, well, Ryan digests that. There's a couple of more examples. So I you got to pull it out. But no, I'm six feet tall, Johnny. I know. <laughs> um, there's a couple other examples I actually want to well, uh, talk about. Just, uh, <laughs> just, just real quick. Because these are ones that have always kind of personally bothered me. Right. The myth that men are not interested in being parents and inherently unsuited to being single parents. I have known women. I have known men. I have known a combination of everything. That have actually thought men shouldn't be parents. You know, um, you've seen shits with kids. I've I've actually known people who I won't explain that term on here. Uh, I, I've actually known people who you know, like a guy approaches a kid, the woman grabs their kid, and think, oh, he's gonna do something. Is he dressed as a clown? Um, the other one is emasculation, the idea that uh, they that men shouldn't be interested in the traditional feminine activities. Um, I, I don't get that really. Shit, I cook for a living. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> most of these, I don't care. most of these, I actually agree that you know, if if there's a, a toxicity to any of those, I don't get it because I don't. Well, uh, as far as my activities, there's I not don't... a toxicity. I mean, the, the the terms masculine and feminine, it's just it's it's the the noises that we make with our face to fucking describe certain behavior. It it's not supposed to, you know, <clears throat> kind of kind of imply. I mean, obviously, look, I know the role of language, and, and you know, things have a meaning, but. It's just like you can't say that this thing is is masculine or feminine. It's just kind of what we call certain things. But so I don't I, think there's such a thing as like an activity being inherently sort of masculine or feminine. If a dude's into it, then whatever. If a chick's into it, then whatever. So I think you um, could call it like our conversation last week of it being uh, like stereotypes. Stereo it, it's That's a stereotype. What I, was of too. Um, I mean, all that, all the stuff you read that are. The masculine toxicity bullshit. It's just the extreme stereotypes that they have going on. I mean, women can grow beards. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 but there's, but here's the thing: is there's nothing wrong with with being a man or acting like a man, and there's nothing wrong with being a woman or acting like a woman, and there's nothing wrong with being a woman acting like a man or, or vice versa. So I mean, I mean there's a song totally about fine. it. Dude looks like a but lady. Here's the thing with with the toxic masculinity thing. I, I'm. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I don't know if skeptical would be the right word, but in as much as I don't think it was the same thing we were talking about last time with, uh, with like rape culture, there's no place in society that I've ever fucking heard of in an American society, at least in this country, you know what I mean? That's the only thing I could speak to where any type of fucking behavior like that would ever be acceptable. You know, so, you know, some dude acting like a fucking asshole is it still acting like an asshole. So, you know, some of um, this, yeah. some of this I could see. I've heard it specifically about the, the guys in the 40s and 50s and 60s, because a lot of these guys were in the military. You know, in the military, there is a certain personality type, a certain way of life that's beaten into you. And so that's yeah, where yeah, yeah. that's where some of this I my guess is, is, is from is a culture that by necessary means really had to be military in some way. And that's kind of what I think some of it comes from. Cause some of these guys in this Twitter feed said, my dad never said, I love you. My dad never hugged me. There's, there's a lot of things that the traditional guys now, you know, I hug my son every night. Um, but they just didn't do because of a, a culture. So I think what it is, and this is a complete guess was it was just a cultural norm for that time because of circumstances 
out of their control. It's the only thing I can think of because it's true. I mean, uh, traditionally guys were supposed to be some degree of stoic. The, the, the woman or the wife or the girlfriend was more emotional. This is a, a, a character, character of a society, especially Western society at one point. So I, I do think some of it has some base in reality. I think it's a stereotype. Um, if you're curious on this list, it's geekfeminism.wiki.com slash wiki slash toxic underscore masculinity. If you're curious about it, um, this seems to be a, a, a something that's been come up. It's been there for a while, but especially after the Me Too movement, it seems to be something that I've been seeing a lot more of over the last yeah, couple of you know, months. Yeah, you know what I, I'm realizing I kind of like about all these things? You know, re- regardless of, of if some of the, the, the fringe ones maybe get you know, their, their, their messages crossed or, or give the wrong impression about, about sort of their feelings is that women are actually starting to really throw their weight around. You know what I mean? Like in as much as like, Oh, okay. Yeah. In in today's society, this will be a force to be reckoned with. You know what I mean? Whether, whether we sort of feel it might be right or wrong, that's almost beside the point. It's like, Oh, now we, we have a contender, I you know, and, and it's a, it's a, a strong one and it's it's like all these people just realize like oh shit we're actually strong together you know what i mean i I think Um, the only thing women have against them and this is from what i've heard and then from what i've experienced uh talking to friends of mine is you really there there's there's two type like female bosses and this is coming from friends of mine is you have the female boss that's overly friendly or you have the bitch boss and because she's being mean to you for whatever reason, she's automatically bitchy. That's the one thing that I've heard from women that 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 there is. You're either, you're either a bitch or you're nice. And I think that's the one thing that society is slowly having to adjust to. That because I've had plenty of male bosses that were real pieces of work. <laughs> and the last yeah, thing we I'm, call them assholes. It's the same thing. Yeah, but for dudes. And and I would say that the other thing is women have against them is I and I've actually heard this in purpose in, uh, on person and I'm surprised nobody punched the dude is the guy said oh my girlfriend's on uh, on the rag she's just being a bitch it's like dude you uh, and no and, and your 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 girlfriend or wife just didn't smack you from that maybe she just is having a shitty day. <laughs> I, I think yeah like, really I, I think blaming somebody's uh, bad mood on something that's out of their control is pretty piss poor yeah well you know there's there's a lot of things about what what I really think I have a fucking problem with is is people's idea of of justice you know what I mean like being there there's a difference between the the possibility of 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 repentance and 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 allowing somebody to sort of sort of you know atone versus uh, you know retribution. So I have you know people people don't want justice. People want fucking retribution for 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 a lot of things. And it's like I, hey, listen, we suffered, and the idea to make these things right is not to just make things not make people suffer is to make you suffer. So I you know, and, to... and that's just the wrong idea. And that to me, that's the fucked up thing is that seems to be the way society has gotten between like politics these days, the way fucking friends talk to each other, you know, just because they have different political opinions. It fucking breaks my heart to hear the way people talk about, about fucking, you know, Trump supporters and things like that. So, as if they're as if they're evil people, so or I wanna, as if you know, like the things from you know, I heard Republicans say about Barack Obama. It, it, it fucking, it's it's sad. So I want to understand that, that people that think true. that that's okay. You know, society should be better than the individual. So, you know what I mean, we all we all have an individual voice that can sometimes be really fucked up. But society is supposed to be that safeguard to be like, hey, no, that's not cool, dude. So I want to bounce something off your guys' ideas because this is something that I've been thinking about for a while. <laughs> Oh, good <clears throat> was the fact that the Judeo-Christian worldview is is becoming less for whatever reason the the, the the Christian Church has not have as much influence now the basis of Christianity itself the core message of Christianity is forgiveness because Christ died for your sin granted Christians have done and I and as a Christian, white male Christian, I, I, we have done some very shitty things in the supposedly in the name of Christ. Um, 
a lot of things these Christians have Raping, done hurt have, have hurt people. Genocide are, are not uh, of Christ. But, but but the fact that I think what it is is the core message being forgiveness. Nobody wants to forgive anymore, and I think part of it is, Inquisition. is is because that mm-hmm. worldview is is going away and that message is going away. I think the the, the humanistic part of wanting vengeance is kind of. <laughs> taking up the vacuum vengeance is mine because if you you know what do you think yeah um yeah well to me i obviously this is uh here's where i become unpopular um you were popular good point with the midgets Um, (laughs) with red noses i was gonna say only midget clowns uh but that's too specific i was thinking alcoholics Um, but okay oh well yeah Red noses. People still get red noses when they drink. Yeah, if you're yeah. a midget. That's still a, that's still a thing, or is, did that die with like Winston Churchill? No, it, um, it, it, there's a couple of instances on why that happens to people. But <laughs> okay, back to your popularity a contest. A couple of fat, jolly, red nosed fuckers still hanging around there. So, what were you saying, Ryan, um, before you said I was going to slap you? Uh, something about uh, you being no, popular. That, um, the, 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 the idea of, you know, sort of quote Judeo Christian you know, worldview and sort of, sort of where those morals come from to me is, it's just, it's just human. It's just human morals. It's what we know to be in inherently know to be right or wrong. You know, obviously some people sort of fall between the cracks on, on their, See, I, in, in, in their I would, brain chemistry or whatever. But. I, I would disagree the fact that's inherent morality because I've known, I've known a few people, and if you read through it, history, the inherent morality, the supposedly of Judeo-Christian worldviews, is not natural to humanity. I think, I personally think, and this is my opinion, is the natural human state of things is, I want that, I take that. I think it takes more work and, and, and more dedication not to do that. That's, that's where I disagree. Okay, well, like so, Roman um, culture was a perfect example of it. Roman culture was... was Take, take, uh, 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 you know, you can worship any god you yeah, want as well, long as it's was, the Roman emperor. What was the saying? Uh, um, we're going to create a wasteland and call it peace. That, exactly. Th- there's, there's a lot of reasons why the fucking Roman Empire failed. But there's a lot of reasons why society itself, keep, it keeps we keep coming back to, to civilized and more civilized society. And, and, and morals are inherently uh, uh, true, whether or not people, you know, had motivations to ignore them. Uh, uh, back in you know history and things like that, but society works because it's way easier for me to you know we're talking obviously the beginnings of civilization here. Uh, it's way easier for me to trade with you my goods and services in exchange for money or your goods and services than it is to kill you and take your shit and then have to worry about my fucking neighbor coming over and slitting my throat and killing my family because they want all of my shit because I just robbed your shit. You have one of seen those me is play profitable. One of those is not. You know. So what do you think, James? In a non-joking matter, um, manner. Should I come back to you? I think there's both sides of it. I think there are a certain amount of people who don't live by any moral code, and yeah, but by choice. Well. I think part of it is that there was no maturity, so it goes to nature versus nurture. Um, there was no maturity given to that person, like to teach them to think outside themselves. No, nor mentor, for example. Yeah, no I mean Caligula being one. That guy yeah, was yeah. spoiled completely, and then we saw what he did at the Roman Empire when he finally got up there. He was a very selfish person. There's always going to be a group of people like that who we refer to as narcissistic. And that is always going to be in our culture. But then we also go back to, do you guys really think Adolf Hitler's parents were terrible people? I don't. They, As far as I've seen in history, they weren't a terrible piece of person. But then we can go to World War One, where, you know, his brain got damaged in mustard gas. But that, But is that an excuse for what he did? I don't think so. Well, I mean, one no, of the things. No, but but um, he felt that he, in his in his sort of sort of warped perception of everything, was doing the right thing for his 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 country yeah. and his beliefs. And that's where we come back to it: is there was some good that he did for the German uh, 
people. I was going to well, throw like, in for, Nazis, wait, wait, but he fix, helped fix the economy of the Nazi. For for that, when when James what James said, when he took back the Rhineland, which was taken from them, he would have if he just did that would have been considered an amazing leader because uh, the Treaty of Versailles bankrupted Germany. Yeah. Um, the, the the positive thing, if, there, if you can actually say a positive thing. World about War that, One, for those of you who are wondering what the Treaty of Versailles was. Yeah. Um, oh, never mind. I if, was going to say, what? You're an idiot. If, anyway. if there was a positive thing out of, out of what Hitler did was really he raised the German the, the German society up. The, the negative side was everything after the fact. Well, yeah. I mean. Yeah, you, but my point is, is, is it's not like all of those people thought that they were, they, they didn't think that they were evil. They thought that they were doing the right thing based off of their own particular moral code. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but, you know, um, so so morals, you know, from, from Christianity or from elsewhere tend to follow the same kind of trends regardless. You know what I mean? And like, my point is, is if you're a, if you're a, a violent person and you're a Christian, you will be a violent Christian. You're not if a- you are a violent person and a non-Christian, you will be a, non, a violent non-Christian. If you are a non-violent non-believer, you will probably be a non-violent person. Yeah, you know? I don't. I don't disagree, but I, I do think, to some degree, uh, I think the message of the cross helped to to calm people down to some degree. But on the other hand, in the process of all that, um, the people that called themselves Christians did a lot of damage to people uh, on the sides. It was well, what it what it did was it brought different different sort of fringe religions together. I mean, it's, it's the idea of where all of the saints come from. It's like, hey, you, you're, you can kind of pray to your God, but secretly you'll be praying to our God. You know, they, they were sort of adopted and, 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 and repurposed and all these things, renamed in a lot of, in a lot of places. Um, and, and it was a way for, you know, the, the, the early, uh, some of the early saints and some of the, there's a lot of saints out there uh, as far as Catholicism goes. Um, but that's where Christianity started. We're talking, you know, Holy Roman Church back in the day. A lot of those saints were just, you know, it was a lot of pagan traditions that were that were brought over because they wanted to bring the pagans over. You know, it was a, a lot of other, t- uh, you know, cultures, beliefs, and structures that were adopted into Christianity just to help bring everybody into the fold. But people were still people once they were in here, you know. But it is, to a society standpoint, think about it as selfish, you know, it is it is selfish for me to want to work together with everybody for my own benefit. But partially, that's the United States. That's capitalism. That that's business one hundred and one. Being oh, f- capitalism is 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 great in that regard. You know, empire is great in that regard. Well, that's actually you know, it's the, got its fucking downside. <laughs> but you know, that's one of the things I was discussing with somebody at work today was the fact that. Business is a moral to, to to you, and most businesses, not all businesses, but to business, like your employment, it simple comes down to a a statement to the end of the month. We make so much money, and you you cost so much money. Is there a benefit? No, then remove that. You're but it, but you have to think about statement. you have to think about how beneficial that is. As selfish as it is for that individual, how beneficial it is for the other individuals. How many people does that guy employ? You know what I mean? How many, how much taxes do those employees pay to keep, you know, roads and schools and things like that open? You oh, know, no, no, so 100%. that person being selfish is is benefiting mankind. It, it's selfish and it sucks because you know, person A loses their job, but person you know B, C, and D, you know, maybe getting a, a buck an hour more might be getting a benefit out of it. It just yeah, no, I mean, yeah, but I'm talking this sort of society as a whole. I mean, obviously, individually, there's going to be problems. There's going to be backdoor deals and shady things that happen, and you know, but it it does for the people who aren't trying to skirt the system, or you know, it, it's it is beneficial for us to be as almost as as selfish in that business as possible. Like, hey, let's try to make all the money because you wanted to make all that money benefits you know, so many people to some regard. Um, and you being nice to your employees benefits you. You I, know, I, that's a selfish way, you know. I do wish, though, that there would be a way to be more altruistic in businesses. I just don't think that business would be around for very long, unfortunately, because being selfish... Oh, altruism is is in, incredibly selfish as well. You know, I mean, how many people are altruistic because of the good feeling it gives them? I wouldn't necessarily say that's selfish. Uh, may, I, 
I don't know if I would necessarily call that selfish, at least not in the degree that a, a business is selfish, but no, it's, I totally... Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you like this. A lot of times in, in, in certain therapies, you know, or, or if, if somebody's, you know, a little down in the dumps or whatever about something and it's, you know, not clinical, I'm not trying to dismiss depression here in any sort of way, but um, a lot of times people will say, hey, you know what, go do something for somebody else. It'll make you feel better. So people will go to a soup kitchen and will hand out soup, and at the end of the day, they're driving away in the car going, I do feel better. So it wasn't about the people that they were helping. It was about, you know, that good feeling you get from helping other people. Good point. You know what I mean? And I think inherently there's a bad feeling that you get from hurting other people. You know, and if you choose to ignore that feeling, that's on you. But that morality is still there in your mind. A, a part of it, I would say, is a former pastor of mine once said that man, uh, mankind is born with a community size whole. So I think what you're saying about servicing other people as part of that is you're, you're filling a need that you don't have. Uh, a lot of people who are depressed um, generally just don't want to be around people. Hell. Yeah. Are, are you guys I, familiar with the, uh, the Dunning-Kruger number? Um, unless Sounds it's familiar. Unless it's Freddie, no. Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty sure it was it was Dunning Kruger. Um, basically, it's a, it's a sort of a theory that that we're sort of geared, evolutionarily speaking, to to be involved intimately with about a hundred to hundred and fifty people. I think I got the number right, more or less. Um, that basically we can our our brains have evolved to to kind of keep track of that many people because you know throughout up until maybe a few hundred years ago, which is nothing in the span of time, um, or the history of human beings, is we lived in those groups of about 100 to 150. That was your average kind of community size. So I found... You know, and then... Sorry, so... Nowadays, we're kind of dealing with, uh, with the... I'm aware of 7 billion people, or more than that now. You know what I mean? And so, so it's hard for us to kind of take a look at our community, you know, and see the forest for the, for the trees as it is, you know? So, uh, I hate to break it to you. I don't think this is the same study. So the Dunning Kruger effect in this field of psychology, the Dunning Kruger effect is a cognitive bias in which people of low ability have the illusory superiority and mistakenly asset their cognitive ability as greater than it is. The cognitive bias of illusion, illusion, illusionary superiority comes from the inability of low-ability people to recognize their lack of ability without the self-awareness of metacognition, their low-ability. People cannot objectively evaluate their actual competence or incompetence. That is the Dunning-Kruger effect. That's the effect, okay, not the theory. Was... Checkmate. Ryan, I have to figure out. No, I'm trying to figure out who the hell. But I would be, I'll, I'll figure it out. I would be super curious on that that study. If you can find it, then send it to me. Um, <coughs> I, I I don't know. I think the the benef- Dunbar Dunbar fucking Robin Dunbar. I do think, <coughs> and uh, Dunbar's I, number. That's what it was. Okay. So, okay, here it is. Dunbar's number is a suggested cognitive limit to the number of people with, uh, with whom one can maintain stable social relationships. Relationships which an individual knows who each person is and how each person relates to each other person. This number was first proposed in the 1990s by British anthropologist Robin Dunbar, uh, who found a correlation between primitive brain size and average social group size. Hmm. It goes on from there, but you get the idea. I, I do wonder if some of this stuff is coming up, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, this, uh, if there's a rape culture, the toxic masculinity, some of the other stuff we've talked about. Some of this was really kind of started with, at least jump started into mainstream culture because of like the Me Too movement. Because I'm aware of most of this stuff, but most of the stuff was, was discussed in the fringes of society than than the mainstream conversation point because most of these conversations i think are healthy to have i think if you go too far in the conversations it can be negative okay well i've I've brought this up to john at least and probably ryan as well before maybe you said on the show but i'm not blaming the the internet but i think it really gives credence to a lot of people who would 
previously have been hiding their desires. We, we talked about that last yeah. week about the and, well, community. You know what? So, Let me. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a real life example of that exact thing you're talking about, James. Think about what people did, and not just you know from this country, not to demonize one person versus another. What people do when they travel from one place to another for a war. Okay, like you go overseas for a war, you know, whether it's us in World War One or World War Two Vietnam and or, or Vietnam or I mean, any of these places, it's, it's almost like the prototype of a fucking troll, because here you are in a place where no one is going to know your name. No one's mm. going to remember, uh, you know, what, what you look like or probably will because you're a terrible person. Um, but you're in this place where you're <laughs> Thanks anonymous, for noticing, you know, um, um. So you can kind of get away with these with these terrible, terrible things while feeling that there's not going to be any kind of consequence, you know, and and obviously emotions are going to be heightened, you know, because of because of war and the, you know, the terrible things that happen regardless. So I think you brought up something. So I want to jump to something that hopefully more people know about. I, I've found people that really don't know about this, but. I'm sure Ryan has heard of it. John, I'm pretty sure, has heard of it as well. Um, there was an experiment conducted at Stanford University oh, back yeah. in 1971 Hell where yeah. they took a group and they didn't really tell them much of what was going on. And they picked each person to role play at random. And what they did was they created inmates in this group and guards in this group. This is this is called the Stanford Prison Experiment. Uh, there's uh, YouTube you documentaries it, about it. There's even a movie I believe that Netflix put together exclusively for Netflix. Last if time you I have it, it was on there. I don't know if it still is. Um, but th this has been brought up a bunch. So what happened? Which is the interesting thing is the group that were the guards started being extremely abusive. They weren't told to do much of anything except for you're the guard, you're the prisoner. And it they were locked in for, do you remember how long it was? I don't see it on here. Um, but anyways, there was a lot of abuse that came up that, that ended up happening yeah, it from was, the guards to the It was inmates. remarkable how, how quickly everyone sort of fell into their, to their roles. Yeah. So it said you it was know. dates are from August 14th, 1971 to August 20th, 1971. Yeah, it didn't go on very long because they had to stop it because of the yeah, amount of... Yeah, they had of, to stop it because it was yeah. getting crazy. Yeah, so that that's one of the things that I want to bring up is... These guys that they picked, they basically did it random. They gave them, I forget how much it was, but they paid them to do it. Um, but they were given real no instructions on how to perform it. And, I mean, you would think these guys would have some moral base. But the experiment really showed that there really was no moral base once people were given power over another. Well, that's, and that's, it's, the, it's the interesting thing because there's a lot of interesting conversations that have come out of that experiment. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there, that's where the theory that um, – or the hypothesis rather that, that given the right set of circumstances, you would have been a Nazi too. Yeah. Yeah, that's really what it you was. You know what I mean? And it's, so where's it's the moral thing, code? It's part, yeah, part, well, part group mentality, part what, what would it take for me to go against the grain on this yeah. sort of a thing. Um, if you want to look you know, at a, a real life example of this, um, well, that was a real life example. John. Well, of of well, yes, actually, the, the experiment did happen. Um, <laughs> this wasn't fantasy. But a, 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 a more to true, an actual real life example. Of this not an experiment. Look up a guy by the name of Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Uh -huh. He was a pastor in Germany in World War II who spoke against the Nazis. Um, did it passionately, matter of fact. Ended up being put in a concentration camp and killed before the war ended. Um, a lot of Germans kind of either went with the flow or kept their mouth shut. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was a man who lived his convictions and spoke out against it and died for because, it. Because, yeah. So the, the, there's, there's a perfect example of, you know, of uh, the, the, the crowd mentality. Matter of fact, I would see some even Trump's fans and even the anti-Trump's fans... It's the crowd mentality because I've met plenty of people well, I who would are say even Obama. Well, I mean, I, I, and Bush. I, I a lot of presidents. I think done that what way. it is is it's the except for Nixon. <laughs> what do you call it? it's? That's yeah, it. The tribe mentality. It's I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. And I, I think um, what it is is I think what it is instead before it is some degree it was 
we're Americans. Because at some point you could say, yeah, my grandfather fought for, uh, for war, or, or I went to war for this. So I think it was, it was a, a common goal of we're Americans, but hey, you're this side and we're that side. There was banter, this and that. But I think something happened with, with culture that we're more focused on the individual identity being, you know, I'm... I'm LGBT. I'm I'm uh, I'm Muslim. I'm Christian. I'm a Sagittarius. You know, the, the identity became a bigger a, a bigger thing than than the whole, and I think that's what's hurt it to some degree. Well, what I was kind of alluding to earlier with the uh, the the you know 150 Dunbar number situation is when you when you do take a step back you know, um, and actually start <clears throat> investing in your community. You know what I mean? In, in your immediate surroundings. Yeah. I mean, imagine what would happen. I'm, I sound like a fucking hippie. Imagine what would happen if everybody did that. You know what I'm saying? Just worried about their immediate surroundings, worried about their local government. Wait, you know what I mean? Gravy in the hog farm, baby. I mean, it would be utopia overnight, not to get communistic. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know what I mean? Though It's, <laughs> I, it's uh, interesting what happens when you when you sort of focus locally and and let things sort of naturally kind of progress from there. Society is meant to be better than the individual. So this you know, is, it have that power to to put us to keep us sort of in check just naturally. So this is where I'm going to be extremely pedantic on you. Um, I hate the idea of utopia because it counts on things that's I, not I there. didn't mean, hold on. I, I didn't, no, no, I, I, it was a poor choice of words. Well, I know, <laughs> but it's to say the, the idea of utopia is not there because that's counting on people's ability to not think about themselves. I just don't think it's possible. I, I do Lord think, of the flies. I, I do think what Ryan, Ryan is talking about, in my opinion, is the fact that it, it's community. It's, as uh, my pastor says, it's communitas. It's people living for each other um, and leaning Your on each other. Your pastor shouldn't use that word. Um, well, and be okay, and being so accountable stupid. to each other. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. How, much, how many times were we not an asshole to somebody because the the person standing next to us? You know and, what I mean? I, I'm I, always I, an asshole. I can actually attest to it. I've known him for <laughs> 20 years. Um, so I, I think that's I think what it is is you you hit the the head on the nail is the fact that we live and I actually think James is right on this too. God, I yeah, can't believe I, I just said that. Is the fact that the internet. Instead of having community in real life, it's all a community virtually. Whether it's it's Reddit, Xbox Live, it's IR, it's IRC. It's I think what it is is we no longer go outside. Um, I've actually tried to talk to my labor and neighbors and have them on barbecues. I've met one of them. The other family never goes out fucking side of their house. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's that's got that's got to be how my neighbors think of me. They have to hide the bodies. Um, so I, I think I, I think you guys are right as far as today's culture. And this has always been my thought is there has to be something about today's culture that is toxic to some degree because 30 years ago we didn't have any of these problems. We didn't have mass shootings. We didn't have a massive drug epidemic until like the 80s. Um, um, I, I call bullshit there. Why? There was yeah, really. mass shootings before. Not to this degree. World War Two and the United States school shootings. We lined a bunch of people up and shot them. The United what States. What about the what is it? MIT. That was rare back. What then, about though. when duels were still legal? Uh, no, that was that was not the only mass shooting from. No, no, I, I said what they said is yes. it wasn't as common. Mass shootings. There's a mass shooting that happens in a school or some degree in the United States almost monthly or or weekly. What I'm saying is, was I think the society... Valentine Day massacre in Chicago? <laughs> No. Um, so what it is, is I, I, I think society, there's something about modern society that I do think is negative, And I think it's it's that I think it's the inability. Yes, it was in Chicago during Prohibition, you nitwit. Um, <laughs> so I do think the Internet has harmed society to a degree. I mean, what do you think, Ryan? Since James has been, I, I think I think it's given <laughs> as much good as it as it has bad, and probably infinitely more good if it, 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 it is capable of than than the bad stuff that people use it for. Look, there's always going to be rebels, all right. There's always going to be something to rebel against, whether it's just flat out society with no internet or whatever on the internet. You know what I mean? It's so there's whatever, however good society gets in the future, there's always going to be. You know, a group of people, there's always organized crime. You know, there's always people saying that they can subvert the system for their own benefit. And 
kind of is what it is. You know what I mean? It's yeah. cost of doing business. It's oh, I got nature. one more question for John. Um, have you heard of the YouTube song Sunday Bloody Sunday? I know it's a Black you- Sabbath song. Oh, I thought you said YouTube. No, no, you, you too. There was you a, too, yeah. Yes, actually, I have. A, well, but, Jim Cornette but there's used it another, for There's another another example of a mass one killing. By the edge. Yeah, that's the, yeah. that's what the song is actually about, John. It's yeah, no, no, but what I'm saying thing. is, I don't think it wasn't as it's common. It's not as publicized. That's what I want to bring up. It was <clears throat> not as publicized all over the nation or you know world about the massacres that were happening around the world. But now that we have news basically live all the time, every time it's being recorded and put out more. Columbine was before the internet was really <laughs> See, off of dial-up and I, would go state to state. But on this point, I think Malcolm Gladwell was right as far as the tipping point. If this stuff wasn't as public, I don't think some of the people would be enticed to do it. Because I think some of these people who've done these school I shootings agree. needed help and nobody gave it to them because they were they were like me who – who was the, the, the wallflower, you well, know? you had the guy recently that went and shot up the school that it was sent to the sheriff's department that, you know, he had mental issues, that he had guns. There was, like, the, even the one shooting that the cops were called out on that they never yeah. even went to. See, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, I think but, that, I mean, at what point do you start getting into minority report sort of shit? Oh, I'm not, well, I'm well, not well, saying that, that well, either. Well, that particular one, I think, was just a clusterfuck of problems. But I, I do think... That's the issue with the internet is it gives people who don't have any uh, don't have an out, whether it's a friend, a mom, a a, a marijuana something to help them off that ledge. <laughs> this, marijuana. I, I, marijuana. I, have you ever met an angry Take two stoner? Two of these call me in the morning. <laughs> have, have you ever met an angry stoner? I never have. Yeah, I have. I have. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I think that's the, the negative side is the Internet is and, and broadcasting some of this stuff is it gives people who don't see a, see a way out, gives them a way out. And I, I think that's the issue is that's one of the negative side about it. I don't think it would be as common as much as it is common because well, I don't remember and, and school you know what, when I was a kid. You know what all. fucking disturbs me about about the, the, the Internet and that kind of shit is that you have you have things like the uh, I, I fucking hate even saying the word because it's so stupid. Uh, the incel fucking oh. people. Do you guys watch any of the, the Vice shit? I want to say we brought this up a couple of times. We but, brought, uh, we we brought up in, incel last week. But but yeah, the, the fact that these fucking assholes can find each other and then start getting into that feedback loop, fuck that, man. <laughs> so I'm looking, hold on, I'm really curious. I'm an urban dictionary, which is couldn't be good and bad. So here's the incel. A For incel? Yeah, incel. Yeah, involuntary, involuntarily celibate. A person, usually male, who has a horrible personality and treats women like sexual objects. By the way, is there such a thing as an incel that's a woman? I've never, I'm, I'm, I'm not even joking. I'm being serious. I've never met. I, I would imagine. There's got to be. Would that be the stereotypical cat lady then? Maybe. Yeah, I, I got nothing there, John. I, I don't know. On the internet. Just, I don't yeah. know, man. Because I'm, I'm just sorry. It just kind of struck me as like, whoa. <laughs> um, I think the positive side, uh, uh, and this is kind of our final thoughts. Um, I think what's happening now with the generation after the millennials is I think that the, they're learning, I think, to some degree how to handle the internet. Because for a lot of the millennials, yeah. the internet was was either new or it was there, but their they're parents gave too me. much power too soon. Yeah. yeah it's like, they're bullying me. Have <laughs> and, you read the rules of the internet? And What's their parents, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like I said, it was too much, too much too soon, man. They, yeah. they gave us, they gave us the golden fucking ticket. We had no idea what to do with it. Well, like, well, the problem is the younger millennials, their parents, which were most likely older millennials, didn't really, or even older than that, didn't know how to, didn't know that because for me, the internet wasn't around. I was still finding books by the Dewey Decimal System. You know, so I think the older, the, the when the younger millennials become parents, I think they're going to have an idea of how to integrate the internet safely in their children's lives. Well, I mean, for us, we were what pre-teens when internet was on dial-up. If you Pretty were much, lucky yeah. and rich, 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, a few years later, dial-up was getting faster, and then we had... Uh, um, and then your sister would pick up the fucking phone and fuck no. your whole day up. Anyways, but what I was getting around to is that, I mean, us growing up, we, we were pre-teens when the internet was basically in its infancy, and we got introduced to chat rooms. MSN, AOL, uh, um, what's the other one that I'm trying IRQ, to think of? Yahoo. IRC, um, Relay Chat. Yeah, there was a bunch yeah. of them that came out, and you know we started chatting on there, and that was a really cool thing. And then you would find all these like chat rooms that, ooh, there's shit going on here. You'd be thinking you're talking to a hot 15 year old. That's a 45 year old bearded man sitting in his underwear eating chips. You know. For the so, record, James was also 15. No, I was the no. 40-something-year-old sitting in my underwear. Where, <laughs> you know, James, anyways, but, James, was just a girl, fi- yeah. James was just a 15-year-old that was an asshole. Uh, so I was just oh, oh, oh. When we were talking to 15-year-old girls, we were also uh, around 15. <laughs> so what yes. was the big thing that was asked in every chat room by when you were starting to flirt with? ASL. ASL. Oh, what was it? Hold on, hold on. ASL, that's yeah. it. Yeah, sex uh, location. Uh, yep. Location, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that <laughs> was going around too, and you know, <laughs> we started realizing that there's fucking creepers everywhere on here, you know? So we knew <laughs> yep. that going into yep. our late teens, into when the internet was in everybody's household. There were, you know, uh, uh, Ethernet cords and what was the other thing being run underneath the, yeah. you know, there fucking, was a lot of stuff. So we back knew that. in the goddamn that. day, man, when the, when the one creepy guy on the street just creeped out the four kids who were unlucky <laughs> enough to have to walk by his house on the way to school. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, James and I, James and I and, and, mo- and I guarantee Ryan, both know a young girl who the internet was around who, who basically had to jump, had couldn't be on social media because insert person here decided yeah. to say insert comment here. Yeah, and I, I think um, so. But you know that that like you're saying, you knew a younger girl who was doing that. That the generation after that younger girl was kind of the millennials, and they started coming around, and they're like, "Oh, this is cool. What can we do with the internet?" And they just basically, I mean, went places that went were like the deep end. jumping out of the bushes, like, "Hey, don't do that." <laughs> You know, I mean, so it's like, you we, don't want to go there. So the, the, I guess the best way to surmise it is when we were growing up, the internet was the wild, wild west. Oh, yeah. Anything we, see, in- we had we had hamster dance and Rick rolling, you know, and these, these kids had, have fucking the dancing had, baby. We had Napster, LimeWire, Audio Galaxy, right. I, a, you know, stuff that's not around anymore. And then now with it being more controlled, I'm hoping my children's generation maybe will be, you know, it was that Uncle Ben with with. Uh, Great something, blah blah blah. Great responsibility. Uh, you know, with great yeah, power great comes power great responsibility. responsibility. Hopefully, you know, our children's generation will realize you have to be careful. And I'm hoping because there's well, so many. Look, I mean, at the at the at the heart of it, it's still the free flow of information, and there's 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 the nothing planet. but beauty in that. Hack the yeah. planet, man. Hack the planet. Hack I mean, the fucking planet. <laughs> um, I'm hoping. I mean, a lot of it comes <laughs> down to. It really does come down to parenting. It does come to society. It does come to your neighbors. Um, it does come down to your communitas. It comes down to what... Accountability. You're in, you're, yeah, your environment and your worldview. And, and while yeah. I'm, I may think a Judeo-Christian worldview is probably for the best, as long as people be excellent to each other, we won't have a fucking problem. Same team as high football rules. Dude, you totally read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just ready to go there. so ladies and gentlemen for the matrio podcast as always thank you for listening goodbye